Well, let's talk a little bit about the Kyrie Irving situation. But again, not emphasizing Kyrie in and of himself um, because he's just one person and we're focused on institutions here. But, you know, uh, professional sports are a part of our institutions. Also, there's a bit of a movement. I mean, I don't think it's that real real one here, but we can talk about this. Yeah. Um, So uh, over the weekend, there was an incident at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn um, pro vaccine or uh, pro anti vax <laughs> protesters uh, went outside the Barclays Center in support of Brooklyn Nets point guard Kyrie Irving, who has, as of this point, decided to sit out the season because he's unvaccinated. And in New York, uh, they're requiring all players, anybody going into one of these arenas, whether it be MSG or Barclays Center, I believe that's the rule, to be uh, fully vaccinated. Kyrie Irving has taken a stand against it. I don't agree with that stand. But what I think is instructive about this footage is that, one, these same people were probably vehemently against Kyrie when he was speaking out about Black Lives Matter, for example. And two, one, you can see how these protesters, it's not fully a right-wing protest, but the tactics that they use here, it didn't end up being as devastating as, say, January 6th. But, like, there are lessons learned for some of these right-wingers from what we saw on January 6th. And much like what we're seeing internationally in Brazil, for example, we're seeing the questioning of vote uh, the validity of voting and voting machines, Project Veritas t-shirts being worn by Bolsonaro's kids. You have Vladimir Putin talking about cancel culture. There are lessons being gleaned from what the MAGA movement engaged in and some of the successes there. <laughs> and the right wing as a whole, even though they are by numbers a bit marginalized, the fact that they the, the, the fact that they are willing to go in and part, uh, engage in these tactics, I think, should scare everybody. And you'll see what I'm referring to um, outside the Barclays Center over the weekend. <laughs> Well, again, not a serious situation. I think it was played up a little so on social media. But I walked around Barclays Center about a half hour after this, and yeah, it was all cleared out, and there's like free Kyrie stuff stick to the Barclays Center. And but I will say the uh, COVID nineteen testing booth was uh, up and running, uh, perfectly fine. So. Um, Thankfully, because um, I have walked past um, Barclays Center a couple of times and seen people like that getting harassed by these freaks. Well, and- I mean, we saw it in Union Square. We covered it on the show. Um, they, they they turned over that COVID-19 testing booth, those anti-vax protesters. And 
And uh, I mean, like the, the the thing that evoked the January sixth stuff was just like the pushing of the barricades to go towards look, Barclays. I'm not always against pushing the barricades. Um, I think if you push barricades for something righteous, it's good. Those people weren't pushing it for a Medicare for all. They were pushing it so uh, a single NBA player could get special treatment for a citywide Yes, um, I'm not trying mandate. to divorce the content and, from it. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, and the idea that, like, let Kyrie play. If those people got what they want to any degree more, then we might not have basketball season. And the, this, it's very important Kyrie's getting paid 17 million dollars and he's not playing exactly and he's also not helping his team and probably going to uh kill their chances for a national championship this year because he doesn't want to get the vaccine and because he wants to sort of i guess speak for those people and i mean look i i, I don't know i don't I support the mandate. Like, I think people should get, vac get the vaccine. You can't put people in danger. Uh, like, we already know that even people who have got COVID before can get COVID again. So you're leaving immunity on the table and you just decide that we can't just decide we're going to allow this basketball player to do it. Because fundamentally what these people are about are they're against the mandate entirely. Yeah. They're not just against it for Kyrie. They wouldn't like, like that might let some of the arrow the tires if Kyrie was allowed to play and they weren't. But that's not a society that we should be um, wanting to live in either because someone's so important that they can opt out of public health. Yeah, none of none of those people knew who uh, Kyrie was before this, or not none of them, but a lot of them like were were not engaged in any real meaningful way. Talking about the sports team. Yeah, I mean, look, there, there's that's not a purely MAGA crowd. There, are, like plenty of yes. non-MAGA people there. There's some people with BLM um, um, stuff there, which I think is a bit silly. Um, just me personally, I, like one of the people who is organizing is supposed to be a uh, supposedly a TA um, from the Bronx. That I, I mean, people kind of thread that line. I, we don't need to go into it deeper, but like. I don't I don't know really what more there is to say about this other than um like Kyrie should get the shot and help his team I'll say this games. I'll say this right so you, you uh, there I'm not referring to just the simple like maybe conspiracy ele uh, element in there it's the more right wing conspiracy element of those uh, that anti vax crowd like these same people were the people who were saying that Kaepernick needs to shut up and and stop kneeling and he needs to participate and help his team and it all has to be about the team and they're also the same people that if a football player has a concussion or um a, a basketball player is unable to play you know maybe resting uh get get out there rub some dirt in it contribute to your team and winning is supposed to be the number one the number one uh, way to judge an athlete, and Kyrie is choosing not to win. Well, there's some sort of controversy now because Kyrie was supposedly named to the NBA 75 team, uh, and then apparently, like this sort of might have knocked him off. Which uh, my understanding is, the NBA um, top 75 was chosen by journalists, so I would think that journalists could respond to things that are happening <laughs> currently, such as a player deciding to not play an entire season because they they want to make a dumb point, a dumb dumb point about public health one they don't frankly understand fully themselves and like the jonathan isaac thing is isn't even that much better everybody falling over themselves to, to talk about how um, um um eloquent jonathan isaac is the fact of the matter is is like if we had a uh, a health system that could do um tests for everybody not and not just talking about basketball players in the nba i'm talking about workers in general that could test their antibodies then maybe we could have this thing where you could opt out of vaccine requirements because you, we could tell you have the antibodies right we don't have a system like that and we can't start it with jonathan isaac because where does it stop right because fundamentally again why everyone's um um acting and uh, particularly the right wingers are acting like they have a champion in Kyrie and Jonathan Isaac is because not because they want them to play basketball it's because they don't want any kind of vaccine um or public health uh, mandate or even strong suggestions at all mm -hmm. I think the thing that's really um um upsetting especially with the uh, anti-vax stuff is like if you're an athlete shouldn't you want to like put your body at the most like have as every competitive advantage you'd want to have. And I, I think it's like the, the people sort of defending him um, as this being, especially a thing like Black Lives Matter protesters there, like 
this isn't like I don't and I know like you know this country has a history of um, experimenting on uh, people of color, black people with vaccines. I get that. Yeah. Terry Irving's uh, stance on this has nothing to do with that history and everything to do with the fact that this is some misguided freedom of choice uh, thing. And I think it's, it's, it's bullshit that people would come out to defend him like this. You're yeah. right. Like, You're right. You're right. And I think, you know, whatever it, whatever connection it does have to those ideas of racial justice is like based on YouTube conspiracy wormholes that I think like are something that, you know, as a white person I haven't encountered, but there's like a, a, a separate kind of thing he's engaging in with, I, I don't know. Um, I, I've just heard, I've he heard, heard of these, these videos that I, I don't have familiarity with. Like, I mean, most, Play, NBA players did get vaxxed. Yeah, like they are looking for that competitive advantage, and like I, like it's 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 ironic that he's a flat earther because like to me it's not that much more uh, interesting than flat Earth. Like you're gonna get a few people at the margins who just aren't gonna be, uh, they're they're gonna be have been misled. They're gonna have something going on where they're not gonna be able to get on board, and that's just tough. And then you move on without them because frankly you that. It's what happens in a pandemic when you have a vaccine available. Yeah. And like they can they can join if they just get vaccinated. That's all it takes. I appreciate the call, Josh.